The UK British Olympian James DeGale is starting to peak in fighting shape for his unification bout with none other than TMT Easy Work Badoo Jack. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. First, I want to say Merry Christmas Eve to everybody who celebrates Christmas. Happy holidays. I hope you guys are enjoying this time with your family, friends. Give back to your communities and make this a joyous time also make sure you guys subscribe to the channel putting in that good old-fashioned work for you guys now james gale badu jack it's happening in new york barclays showtime did it again I, I told you guys showtime is definitely turning the tides if you will hbo for a long time was the network to go to but with their recent budget cuts they still haven't really bounced back from that and Showtime has unveiled a good schedule with their their network and then their sister network, CBS. I mean, Adrian Broner is fighting on there. You have James DeGale, Badu Jack with the double feature, which I'll talk about in this particular video. Obviously, Keith Thurman, better not duck me, thun, versus Danny Swift Garcia. These are all very good fights that I'm looking forward to. So shout out to Showtime for unveiling just a monster schedule. And HBO hasn't really matched that. And like Pac said, it's not about East or West. It's not about HBO or Showtime. However, it's just disappointing to see. I don't care. Whoever has the good fights has the good fights. And that's where I give credit to. So shout out to Showtime because they're the ones that have been doing it. HBO, if you look at the most anticipated fights coming up that we know about on HBO, Oh, I forgot to add, Showtime also has Klitschko versus Anthony Joshua, which is a banger. And Sky Sports, so shout out to them. But when you look at it, HBO and Showtime, HBO, the, the best fights that I can think of that they have coming up, none of them are on regular TV. And the problem with that is that what's the point of having a, a regular subscription to the HBO network if you can't get none of these fights? You still have to pay pay-per-view for Golovkin versus Jacobs or Koto versus Kirkland. In fact, the only real fight that I know about that's in stone for HBO is I think Takashi Muir is fighting somebody that I've never heard of and WBC champion Francisco Vargas is fighting in January. And other than that, it's the only other fights we know about are on pay-per-view. But back to the subject at hand, James DeGale Badu Jack is a good fight. And James DeGale, he posted this picture. He, he's looking good pause he's looking in shape and putting in that work looking lean his caption reads i've been working with my strength and conditioning coach nick twice a week for past six months people are going to see the difference come fight night 21 days and counting jack versus the hashtag unification so this is what i like to see in in good fights good stylistic matchups 50 50 fights i want to see this I want to see that they're taking the camp serious, that they're really training to win. I've seen a ton of fighters. I'm not even really going to say, oh, I'll say one name, like Chavez Jr. Biggest fight of his career at the time, and, and probably to this point, against Maravilla Sergio Martinez, and he was smoking weed. He later came out when he failed a drug test that he was smoking weed, got fined and suspended and stuff like that. And he lost clearly by 11 rounds, and I don't really care what he did in the 12th round because he wasn't able to pull the trigger and get martinez out of there but that's the perfect example why would you do that the biggest fight of your career and then if you also watch the hbo 24 7 he didn't really seem like he was taking it serious he was kind of training at the hours he wanted sleeping in to 5 p.m i like to see these trainers or fighters take the bull by the horns and really just assert themselves and try to you know what i mean that's that's what a champion is supposed to do you're like okay this guy it's a unification or even if you're just a champion fighting a challenger or mandatory, I'm I'm not giving my belts away easily. You know what I mean? Like this dude's coming for everything I've worked for and that ain't happening. And I like to see that. So shout out to James DeGale. And I know Badu Jack's working hard too. I've seen some stuff from him as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight, man. Um, I'm gonna try to give more coverage and exposure to this fight because these are the types of fights that are good for boxing, whether you know the names or not, whether casuals know the names or not. It's good because they're unifications. It helps assert and establish key players in the division. And that's what it is. Some people are picking Badu Jack. Some people are picking James DeGale. 
and I'm looking forward to it. You can't count Badoo Jack out. I I did that. I said, man, Anthony the dog Darrell, he's gonna beat him. I was wrong. I was thinking the George Groves fight would be a close fight. He knocked Groves down and and won convincingly. So you know, what I mean, you can't count Badoo Jack out. Floyd Mayweather has a fighter who who resurrected or reinvented his career after a stoppage loss. And that's is boxing. This ain't UFC. Sometimes when these fighters take a stoppage loss, people are like, oh, that's it. They're done for. They can't do nothing else in the sport. And Badu Jack is a prime example that that's not the case. I like James DeGale also. He's a Brit. He looks like he works pretty hard. And he's an Olympic gold medalist. I like his early work in the fight with Andre Durrell. I thought he looked good early. He clearly hurt Andre Durrell, who I consider to be a tactician. Shout out to my dude, Andre Durrell. And Durrell worked himself back into the fight late, made it a close fight. And James DeGale still won, won the IBF belt. So the thing I like is in, in the fight with Durrell, it seemed like James DeGale started to gas, kind of like Kovalev Ward. Kovalev didn't look the same in the second half. And I mean, a credit to who they're in the ring with, sometimes that happens. A person who's not eager to take a loss and, and they're trying and really trying to, to win. Maybe they push you to the brink and you fatigue or whatever. But I like this change from James DeGale. I see a lot of fighters and they actually wait for something bad to happen in their careers to make the change. They don't do it when they're winning or, you know, I mean, James DeGale has one loss, I believe, to George Groves. But since then, he, he's he's been looking good and he's not going to wait till the Badoo Jack fight to switch and work with this strength and conditioning coach. He's trying to do it beforehand. And that's what it is. Unfortunately, in boxing, more often than not, I feel like I see fighters who they get knocked out or take a loss. And then now you want to go to Virgil Hunter or you want to go to Freddie Roach or, you know what I mean? There's a ton of Amir Khan got knocked out, went and switched trainers, left Freddie Roach and went to Virgil Hunter. You look at Miguel Cotto. He took back-to-back -back losses to Floyd Mayweather, then Austin Trout. Now he wants to go to Freddie Roach. You know what I mean? Why didn't you do that beforehand? So... I think there's a difference in this world. Some people are proactive and some people are reactive. So as a fighter, as a champion especially, I like to see the people who are proactive before it becomes a problem, before you get stretched, before you take a loss, you make those changes in camp or to your diet or strength and conditioning coach and add what you need to be the best possible version. And that way you never really let yourself down because you try, you know what I mean? If there's been times, let's say schoolwork or something, when I was in college, took a couple college courses and whatnot, and there's times where I really procrastinated and didn't really work on the paper. So if I got a grade lesser than what I'm capable of, then I only let myself down. However, if I really tried and researched and, and used and spent the appropriate time on the paper, and then I got the same grade, it wouldn't feel as bad because I know I did my part and I was really studying and trying to get the best possible grade. So don't cheat yourself is what I'm trying to say. As a fighter, you never want to do that. You want to um, make sure you have the, the right training camp. So overall, I'm just looking forward to this fight. As far as the undercard, very good also. It's another title fight. You have IBF champion, the sniper, Jose Pedraza, and he's facing another TMT fighter, and that's Gervonta Tank Davis. And that should be a good scrap. It's a good scrap. It's a meaningful scrap. And I'm going to do first looks on these also. But the thing I like about this is it's kind of a shot in the dark type of fight. Because we know Tank Davis, he has all but one knockout. I think he's like 16 and 0. 15 knockouts off the top of my head if I'm not mistaken. Or something very close to that. So we know he has knockout power. We know he's aggressive we know he has nasty uppercuts and i believe he's a southpaw we know these things however this is his biggest step up career wise there's nobody on his resume that stacks up to jose pedraza jose pedraza stopped my dude tevin farmer albeit tevin farmer was learning on the job but we've seen how good tevin farmer has turned out to be so it's still a good name on pedraza's resume like hey i stopped him right he's fought Edner Cherry and other top guys Smith so it's it's a really it's a really big step up challenge for Tank Davis and it's really either sink or swim either he's going to rise to the occasion or he's going to come up short and for that reason aside from the stylistic matchup 
I'm all ears and all eyes and I'm tuned in to this particular fight. Plus, it's a, it's a good venue, Barclays, new venue on Showtime, and you're getting two title fights for one doubleheader. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really looking forward to this card, January 14th. Let me know, does Tank beat Pedraza? And also, who are you picking with Badu Jack, James DeGale? I don't know who I'm even going with. You know what I mean? I really don't. I met Badu Jack. Shout out to him. Shout out to the whole TMT when I was in Las Vegas earlier in this year. And I'm a big dude. He he, he was pretty big. He was, he was a lot bigger than I expected because normally when I'm when I meet fighters, like they're much smaller than me. Just much in general. They're just much smaller. And it's noticeable. And and that's just kind of how it is. But this dude is big. He's a big dude. He's, he's, a, he's a lot bigger than I expected. So it's, it's going to be a good fight at the super middleweight division. Let me know what you guys think. Who are you picking, Jack or DeGale? DeGale looks like he's in shape. Ill, a.k.a. Ego Weight Watchers. Drop that in the comment section. Make sure you share the video. Like the video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego. Signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego. The future of boxing.